So my first question is to Dr. Adel. Dr. Adel, um, you are an expert in cities. You lived in KSA, you're from here, but you also live in Europe, you lived in New York. Uh, before your current position, you work for MOMRA, which is the Ministry of Municipality, Rural Affairs and Housing, so you really know cities in KSA, and then currently you're working with Russian. So what do you think about this central part of the meta city, the, the capital? Are they ready to impress all of this global talent? Are they ready to be the areas where people would come on a weekly or monthly basis from remote communities? Thank you so much, Vlad. Uh, first of all, I would like to amassi uh, al-hudur. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Um, most of the audience is here actually from the young generation, local and international. And what makes our city actually the concept of Meta City is how can we transform it to be more attractive. For what? Attractive for business, attractive for talent, attractive for families, good places to have an easy business. In the same time, it's very important to have the flavor of the lifestyle. What, what makes actually um, like my experience went through is during my 17 years living overseas in the States, um, maybe in the first five years, I didn't own a car. So I used just walk and taking the train. Walking and taking the metro is what makes me to have what I call it sense of direction. If you live in a city and you lost sense of direction, there is there is something wrong in the city itself. If you live in a city and you know where you are, and this was first time to live in the city, you are in a city that has a clear framework for having respect to the basic cells, which is the neighborhood. The basic cells of the um, urban centers the lines, which is the metro, in the same time, what are the distinct districts inside the city? If you go to London, you're going to have to see very distinctive neighborhoods. And these neighborhoods are very well known globally. We really need to think about the basic cells before looking to the metro city or to the mega city or to the metro city as a dinosaur. Really, honestly. We should think about the basics. This is why in Riyadh here, actually, they really working to give a flavor to the basic cells. Now we have what we call the um, Green Riyadh Initiative. And actually, Green Riyadh is producing the green initiative to each neighborhood based on the characteristics, based on the fabric, based on the physical layout of the neighborhood. This is very important even when the real estate developers work to develop the cities. They have this in the, in the, in the, in the, in the library here, in the, in the brain itself. But they don't say it, but they feel it. But today, this new concept, Meta City, is actually what can we have our cities more attractive. My, my, my experience living um, um, abroad, I used to walk for almost 45 minutes or an hour or hour and a half. I remember from Cobley Square to Kenmore Square to BU or Boston Medical Schools. I go through across the whole city. I really enjoy it. There is a very nice concept. It's called when you walk, you say, I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. If you have this concept while you are walking the city, you are in the right city that you can really be attracted and you wish to work there and you wish to open your business and to bring your family and to raise there. If you do have the concept of, I want to grab a cup of coffee, this means there is no atmosphere of to interact and to engage in the city. Dr. Adel, if I, if I may. Yeah, please. If I may, what's important, I think, to the real estate players present here is that you're describing experience 
Exactly. Not objects, right? True. Grab a cup of coffee means that you want to conveniently get out of the building, yes. conveniently walk, yeah. have a convenient location to grab the cup of, cup of coffee, yeah. and conveniently consume True. coffee. And you ideally would like to see people whom you know, yeah. or who you like at least, yes. and you would like to see some beautiful setting. Absolutely. Right? That is what we need to think about, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes. When, when, when later on, when I, when I came back to the, I, I came back in 2017, um, my, when I joined Mombra as the Deputy Minister for Urban Planning, we worked really hard to achieve this concept. We worked on the urban intervention initiatives. We worked in a, in a very interesting project. It's called the public space per capita. Not only to how many square meters you need to provide public spaces per person, but at the same time, the accessibility. People should really walk in the city and to enjoy the city, not only to go to enjoy a park or to enjoy something. This is why I believe there are three main things to achieve the attractiveness for the urban component. The destination, this is very important. Then you have to have the eye level component. If you don't have the eye level component, something wrong in the city. And the attractiveness in terms of the mixed uses. I'm not going to talk about mixed use because I think my colleagues will, will talk about that. But these are the three main components for any attractive city. By, my, lately, uh, joining Groshan actually is where the Giga project, you can see that um, providing and integrating the density with the public spaces, with the greenery, is what produces the lifestyle. And this is, this is a key if we're going to talk about housing projects, mixed-use projects, hospitality, respecting the city corridors, the neighborhood edges, all of these components, physical components, that can make any project very successful. If we talk about each one and take them as an experiment, how these can play as players inside the master plan itself. I think I need to stop here, Vlad. Yeah, Dr. Adel, thank yeah, you so much. Yeah. So, so what I'm getting from this is, uh, you know, these big centers, the capitals, right, uh, the, the super centers, as we call them, they also need to make an effort. Yeah. And they need to provide experience, and they need to provide lifestyle yeah. to the people who live there, but also, as we're discussing the Meta City, for the people who will come. You know, people who come weekly, people who come monthly, people who actually live far away, that are part of this global Meta City, they will compare their experience, they will compare their lifestyle, True. and they will come more often where the experience and lifestyle is True. better. Is this right? That's 100% yes. This is what we call the balance. We need to prove the balance between the virtual lifestyle, life scenarios, the business, the physical, how you're going to be there, how you're going to establish yourself there, the concept of being, and the economy itself. All of these are feeding each other in a reciprocal communication bet between these three main elements. Thank you, thank you. Let us now move to the PropTech Connection. PropTech Connection is a uh, very advanced uh, property technology and technology consulting firm. And Stuart, you're one of the leaders. Um, question to you, I mean, you've been thinking about the same, probably, uh, that Dr. Adel has just described. So one question I wanted to ask you is, uh, what should the premium city do to deliver this premium experience? But then the other question is, after all, we're at the real estate forum. What are the implications for real estate players? Are we saying, you know, no more C-class office in the mega, like in the, in the center, right? Is, is this the only implication? Do you see others? Okay, thank you for that. Um, and I think we agree with some of your conclusions earlier um, about the, the real change in the workforce. So I think um, a statistic that I like is cell phone coverage in San Francisco these days is 40% down from where it was five years ago. And it really shows you that remote, that change in you work. Move a little bit closer, please. No sir. problem, thank you. So I thought what I'd talk about today is a specific use case. Talk about the commercial aspect and office, because I think when you talk about quality of life and community, offices are, have an integral role in that. 
So I think um, one of the challenges we see in commercial real estate is the adaptation globally to that uh, changing dynamic, the working from home. So I think, I'm not talking out of turn here, but globally commercial real estate is in, a, in a, a difficult place. There was a lot of hot money within the last 15 years or so, but I think what we've seen is that it's not homogenous, and it's not as simple as saying grade A, grade A, grade B, grade C. I think we see three components. A little FT kind of summarized this recently and very similar to our thinking. At the top level is that premium, that grade A, um, the new builds. These, these buildings are not challenged, they're top of the range. Everyone wants to work there, everyone wants to be associated with, with it. And that's the likes of Hudson Yard, the uh, Park Avenue in New York. I work beside the Salesforce building in Sydney, which is again a top of the range building. The area where you, you identify real challenges is at the bottom, is that grade B, grade C, and there's real challenges but, there. But, but, but what are they, so if you're saying that we're going to depart from this simplistic categorization of grade A, grade B, grade C, but towards what? I think that's a good question. It it's, it's becomes a little bit more divergent. It's about the, the building itself. It's about its importance in the community. I think just looking at things narrowly on a grade A, grade B, C, grade C, it's quite, it's quite shallow, um, and I don't think people will be doing that any longer. So what I would say is it's not homogenous. You almost need to look at the building and how it's configured. So that applies both for the... So do you mean it is the, the kind of the office and the building itself and the surroundings? Yes, I, I, I do, yeah. So I think it's the, the office, the surroundings, the integration with the community, the appeal it has, and it's not necessarily that it's brand new or... Uh, all, of the, all singing, all dancing, but it's the thought process, the use of technology, the connectivity that, that helps do that. So I think th that grade B, grade C challenge, I think a number of those in the, the established cities, and we don't have that challenge here, but London, you mentioned earlier on, only 30% of the grade B and grade C buildings there will meet energy certificate challenges by 2030. So there's a lot of capex involved, technology adoption to get somewhere meaningful there. What we see in the middle is uh, com some buildings and operators doing very well, but what they've done is pivoted away from a traditional B2B model, more to a B2C mindset. So they're thinking about the users, end users, and the journey. I kind of describe... And, 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 and who should care about B2C aspect, right? Who, who is the... Who should, who should be the advocate of the consumer? I think everyone has to be. Um, if you're but if it's everyone, it's no one, right? Well, I think operators need to consider it. I think there, I would consider the, what the user journey is a bit like the hotelization of, of real estate. I think people expect now to be part of that user journey. They expect an element of self-serve. Um, and they expect the data and understanding. So, so when you, the, the people that have done well in this space have done a, a really good job of building that user journey, building that experience, and they've used technology to support that. So I'll give you one interesting view and in just uh, one of the offices that we've seen, and it's happening globally. The new offices that are, are picking up tenants very quickly, instead of 10% of space being flexible or communal or, or meeting space, those numbers are now near enough 40%. So that really reflects, I think, your, your Meta City comment. People are coming not just to work at a desk. They're coming to meet colleagues, they're coming to collaborate, they're coming to build, build connections and understanding that. And I think that's very important. The other thing I think it's important for users is to understand their environmental footprint. And I think we've heard a lot about sustainability yep. over the last couple of days, but people need to understand both tenants as well as end users how they can help. So giving visibility of data, in environmental impact, carbon footprint, and then offering solutions. So maybe turning, turning off lights, you know, turning off air conditioning, moving people around the building for the best use. I think that has to be the, the modus operandi now. Qu question about in investments. Um, real estate is a lot about you know, funding and investment, right? We, we will probably say that you know, this class C, grade C offices in the big cities is not really where you would invest today. Are you saying that investors should look at those offices that provide user journey and integration with community rather than just a well-designed standalone a building of cubicles. Yes, I am. I think that's it's fundamentally important. I think if you 
with a, I used to work in investment management, so you look at the stock rather than the sector sometimes. So I think in this particular case, you need to go down to look at the building, look at the developer, look at their tech stack. It's, it's not as simple as doing a desk-based review anymore. And um, as you say, I think there are pockets within that sorry, A grade going down to B grade where they can be good investments. Very good. Thank you. And uh, I wanted to remind that, you know, the, um, the, the Meta City is clearly not just the super center, you know, the capital, but the Meta City is also a network of different suburbs and towns and smaller cities and rural communities. And here um, I'd like to invite everyone to hear about an exciting example of regeneration. Uh, Engineer Hallett, you work with Red Sea Global on, I think, a, really a set of unique projects on regenerating um, some of the communities. Uh, can you tell us more about this? Thank you, Vlad. <clears throat> so, um, as a proud resident of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, I grew up during the 80s, 90s, worked in the early 2000s, and here I am now leading the urban planning department at Red Sea Global. Um, we put a role and a principle for us to become a leader in regenerative development and regenerative tourism. And if I would love to simplify that, I would simplify it in two words, people and planet. What we did for people, like we all know about what, what has been happening or announced during the last few months, few weeks about the opening of our resorts, St. Regis and Six Senses. However, behind all this, if you look to the beautiful map of the Red Sea, you will start witnessing the following. This is what we are planning for the people. We have a growing community there, going on with about 14,000 inhabitants as an employment-based population for all the people and the families who are working and will be working across Red Sea and Amala destination. If you look, if you look, if you dive deep into that, you will find um, a contribution, a planned contribution to the overall economy of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia upon completion of about 33, 33 billion reals. This is an added value if you're going to get for this. So this is a regenerative aspect. Not only that, you look into contribution and assisting and guiding around 3,000 farms across the Red Sea and Amala in Umluj al Waj and Dibaniamba. This is another added value that we're doing to the community. If you look to these assets with the Red Sea um, Airport, the International Airport of Red Sea, if you look into all the solar panels, the 760,000 photovoltaic panels to make sure that we are leader in renewable energies in fueling our development, all that we will ask ourselves a question, are we witnessing a birth of a new paradigm of towns and cities? The impact, um, I know that the main topic that we all talk about and what Dr. Uh, Adil um, uh, explained about the meta cities and how cities work, we are not a meta city. We have an impact of a meta city on the surrounding. And this is something that we witness and all the people of all the residents of the surrounding communities and town start feeling it. We start witnessing um, all these ongoing regenerative activities, all these regenerative initiatives that's happening across the Red Sea and Amala. Um, this is in a, in a nutshell and in a brief about the regenerative town and the new paradigm of towns that we're introducing to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Thank you, but uh, of course we have, you know, it's a very new and, uh, and fresh and innovative concept. Can you tell us more, for instance, about, I think, two, two questions to, to start with. One is, what is the structure of the economy of this regenerative town? And the second is, what is the structure of talent? Do people work in the regenerative town and they live in, you mentioned Umluj and Alwaj. Do they live in Umluj and Alwaj, or do they live in Jeddah? Do they live in Riyadh? Or you know, what is the economy and what is the structure of Good migration question. and people? Good yeah? question. Yeah. Um, I think as we discuss, uh, towns and cities are evolving, and it will keep getting evolved. Um, 
at the moment, our target is to diversify the economy. That's why even though we have a tourism, we are a tourism destination, but you will see that we have community facilities to support the residents and the people who work there. This is also an indirect, indirect opportunities. We're talking about 120,000 direct and indirect job opportunities that will come out of Red Sea development in general. This, is, this will be generated within the 32,000 um, square kilometer, the area that, that Red Sea and Amala occupy, but also will have an impact on Omluj and al Waj and Diba. So we have supported facilities to make sure that the tourism destination is up to speed. Um, you're, you're talking about, in addition to the community facilities for schools, hospitals, uh, recreational facilities, we also having uh, a nursery that's considered the largest in the region, one million square, um, uh, square meter that has almost, almost 30 million plants that will be serving this. This also may trigger in the future that we start thinking about the urban farming, urban farming and contributing to the overall food security. So if you notice that we're taking things gradually, we make sure that uh, tourism, we are focused on tourism destination, but in the same time, we need to support it with all the required facilities. And right, all so, the so, required so it, looks like, it looks like an overall broad portfolio of economic activity. Tourism, tourism at the center, and then you have Correct. all the it's rest. Spearhead, yeah. so the tourism activities will be spearheading the, the, the growth and the economic, and we all know that we cannot rely only on this aspect. That's why um, the company and all, all of the teams across all departments working aggressively and productively to make this happen. And when you say regenerative town, right, can you explain us a little bit the term? So, do you regenerate something that existed before? Uh, so, um, do you build something new? Do you build something new in connection with what exists? Correct. So, um, as I mentioned, like it's all about the people and planet. So, without these two parts, so if we are not making this better, if we're not making it better than it was before, that's not regeneration. And if you notice of all the KPIs that we had, all the achievements that we did in terms of number. These are all aspects of successful, future successful regenerative town that would be really a paradigm and a role model for all towns, especially the coastal towns that we have. Very good, very good. So at this stage, we still have a few moments left uh, for this discussion. Let me um, ask uh, the esteemed panelists any, any, any further questions, any, any further observations. Um, I, I would like just to highlight something here regarding uh, the generative. Um, um, I'm not going to speak on behalf of Riyadh because I think um, this, this is kind of like more RCRC and uh, uh, Riyadh municipality, but I'm going to speak overall as a, one of the inhabitants in this city. Um, Riyadh is a city of opportunities. And um, I remember there is a very nice joke between the young creative and smart people here, they, they asked me in the beginning that, did you move to Riyadh or not yet? I said, no, not yet, actually, I'm coming from Riyadh. They said, oh, you're the last one. Everyone moved to Riyadh. This we have it here. What does it mean? It means all the opportunities that you really need to build your own legacy, especially you are still in the early age. The capital here, Riyadh, is the place where you can build um, yourself. This is number one. Number two, if we look to the technology in the whole kingdom, I'm not talking about the city, because this is a very important part actually for Meta City that can help how you can run the business and to make a mega business virtually. The, the, the technology is really advanced in the kingdom. And if we go back a couple years ago during COVID-19, why the education in the, in the country did not got affected negatively? You know why? Because we were ready for the technology. Immediately, we fit in the system for virtual learning, virtual classes, virtual schools. So are we ready? Yes. Our cities, our cities for opportunities, yes. So what we're gonna have by 2030, we're gonna really be competitive 
in terms of the livability ranking, in terms of technology um, ranking, in terms of stability, security, and at the same time, we are ready to say that we, for any um, incident that happened a couple of years ago during COVID-19, we are ready for any of this. So this is very important platform that we really need to understand that Meta City is not only to run the business and to make it successful, but also to make it for a long time, to be the spine, Amud al for our uh, uh, country economy. Thanks so much. Thank you. Stuart. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. And I, I think one of the things as a, an outside observer is the, the thing that's most inspiring for me about Vision 2030 and is we've come to Riyadh. It's obviously the center, the economic center and the power. But what, I, what we've seen, and I think is the, the projects that are going outside of Riyadh are, are, are so compelling and so interesting. On a personal level, I think it's important that an economy has a multitude of centers. Um, but I think that concept of the meta city feeding up is quite important. So it can be a, an innovation hub, it can be a tourism hub, but I think it's important that they are connected. And I think that degree of strategic planning is so powerful. Um, I, I, I lived and worked in London for many years and just checking, Mr. Johnson's not around yet, but there is a, effectively London was very, very, UK was very London centric. And it, effectively, innovation in some of the, the regions there happened almost by accident rather than design. And I think the, the, the kingdom and the division 2030 is really pushing that, whether that's NEOM, whether that's innovation in Jeddah, whether it's the Red Sea, the Red sea project. And I think that's really compelling. And I, I agree with my, my counterpart here that I think technology has a really important part to play. I talked about offices earlier on, but I think infra infrastructure is vital. People are not going to want to sit in 90 minutes of traffic to get to an office. So that's not quality of life. So you need almost a hub and spoke model where people can work in their local community. They have the offices, they have the connectivity. But then when they need to go to Riyadh or Jeddah, that they, they have, the, have the power to do that quickly and integrate quite quickly. And it's a good experience for that business setting. Thank you, mate. Um, I believe that. Um because one of your questions about if people will be, will be staying there, will be working somewhere else, or staying somewhere else, and Marco Rizzi, uh, for a city or a town to survive and mm -hmm. build a legacy, there will have residents, and it's gonna be active and livable. Um, that's one thing. Um, another one that um, the future, the future really is now, of where once we're witnessing all this development that is happening, across, across uh, the Red Sea destinations in Amala. I would like to avoid the word Red Sea project because we have many projects now that come. And I believe um, that when we meet next year, there will be uh, more uh, promising news about the towns and the development that we are bringing back to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the discussion is... Um uh, amazing. Now I'm also looking at the, um, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the clock. We have just a couple of minutes to finish this. So allow me to uh, outline some of the conclusions from our conversation. Understanding that the Meta City is going to be uh, the basis of competition for the future, there is an important agenda for both the, the big city and the remote locations. Um, and I know that some of the remote locations are not necessarily remote, because then the question is remote from what if they think that they Correct. are the centers? Correct. Right? I would add then to that, because <laughs> yes. if it's remote, yes. it might compete or not. Yes. We are, we are even beyond competing with other towns or cities. We're complementing. And that, that's why if you look at yes. the Red Sea destinations and Amala, we are complementing to the surrounding. We're not competing. Yeah. So let's say uh, other important centers other important <laughs> centers. So the, the, the agenda for both. If we think about Riyadh, for instance, for, for, for a second, Riyadh clearly will need to make an effort on, as Dr. Adel, you said, on really becoming a distinctive um, urban attraction beyond just the economic opportunity, right? So here we speak about, you know, um, a lifestyle and an effort on lifestyle. Here we speak about an effort on experience, and that goes for you know, true for, you know, significant planning efforts, but it also goes true for 
uh, real estate yeah. uh, players, right? Uh, you mentioned, um, Stuart, you, ma you mentioned that the ABC grade should disappear, and we should grade not just, you know, the size and the quality of the cubicle in the office, but the integration with the community, the experience again with the user journey, because the, that is what is going to satisfy the residents and the visitors more and more, um, and that is what is going to be the focus of the investors. And then we speak about, you know, the new centers that are going to appear, regenerative towns. I think this is a great, can I say, technology or methodology of building something. They will become the new centers. Um, the remote work technology will be key to success of the MetaCity, as well as the transportation technology. But the remote work is where we see that the emerging market, quote unquote, it's hard for me to call Riyadh an emerging market, but you know, this kind of new cities are going to be in advance in terms of remote technologies, and, and they, they should absolutely use this, this uh, edge. And, and then very importantly, the, the long-term focus. I think here we're speaking about the transformational processes such as uh, regeneration, uh, regenerative towns, such as, you know, um, back to the importance of the rural areas, long-term investment in transportation infrastructure, changes in master planning, mm -hmm. so there is a very long-term aspect to all of this. So at this stage, I'd like to uh, join, I'd like everyone to join me in thanking our esteemed panelists. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you.